Greetings and welcome to another edition of Tea Talk, a transsexual's perspective on the world around us. Today's show is my personal message to President and First Lady Obama. It has been about a month and a half since you, Mr. President, have been sworn in as 44th President of the United States of America. And I must say that you and First Lady Obama have hit the ground running. Uh, the both of you certainly have a lot of work cut out for the next four years. Um, however, so far, so good. It's just been amazing to me. The election was the most emotional election I had ever experienced. I mean, you know, it was just, I was so emotionally connected to the outcome of this election. And I believe then, as I believe now, that you, Mr. President, are the one that we need this country needs to lead us through positive change. From the moment I saw you back in 2004 during the Democratic Convention when you gave that fabulous speech, you captured my attention. And not too long after, I have to say that First Lady Obama, you also captured me. I mean, I started campaigning for you, President Obama, even before you had officially announced your, you know, nomination or you were actually um, running for presidency. It was just so funny. I was telling everyone I could about you. And then once I heard that you had um, actually officially announced that you were going to run for president, it just, I was ecstatic. I feel such a sincerity with the both of you. I mean, you all truly convey to the American public that you care about all types of American. Now, I am a transsexual American, and I've endured great discrimination in my life. Uh, many numbers of us feel uh, in the transgender community that we're forced into a life of obscurity um, because of the great social obstacles that are caused based on people's, um, you know, ignorance and misconceptions of our community. And many of us feel like we're ostracized, um, which then leads to a spirit of disenchantment throughout our community. About eight years ago, I was brutally beaten up by a group of guys that targeted me for being transgender. And um, it was truly a life or death situation. I mean, I had to really fight for my life. It was horrible. After that experience, I decided that I needed to try to do something to make things better for myself and for other transgender people. So I began my advocacy for transgender Americans, transgenders that live in this country that on a day-to-day -day basis deal with much discrimination. I am extremely encouraged about you two being in the White House. I mean, I, you know, I just feel like it's some really great things that are going to happen in these next four years. And I have to share with you an experience that a girlfriend of mine had that was the thing that truly confirmed for me that you two really cared about all types of Americans, even transsexual Americans. Shortly before the um, convention this summer, I was uh, like the beginning of August. I got a call from a transgender girlfriend of mine who lives in Ohio. Her name is Tequila Sweets. And um, up until a little before that phone call, she had been in support of Hillary, Hillary Clinton, and she was very disappointed that she had lost the primaries. Tequila was calling me to tell me that she had changed her mind. She was so happy that you had won the primary and that you were a fish going to be the you know Democratic nominee for the President of the United States. And she started to share with me the story of why she changed her mind. And I tell you, I just had to laugh. It was just amazing. She had gone to uh, a town hall meeting that you, uh, First Lady Obama, were speaking at. Of course, she said it was very uplifting and positive. You gave a fabulous speech, as you always do. And when you were leaving, you were walking down the aisle, and people were, like, asking you, stopping you to sign autographs. So she wanted one really bad. Now, Tequila is a beautiful transsexual. However, when you see her, you know that she's transgender. In other words, she's not, quote-unquote, passable. 
and she wanted an autograph, but she didn't know how you would react to her. So she was a little shy about asking you. So she was indecisive. Should she stop you when you get to her row or should she not? Well, anyway, when you got to her row, something in her just said, you know, hey, she's going to do it. So she stuck her paper out in the aisle and you grabbed it. You signed it. And when, you, when she was handing it back to, when you were handing it back to her, she grabbed it, but it was like she didn't, almost didn't want you to look at her. You, she was really shy about uh, taking it back because she really didn't know how you were going to, you know, respond to her. Well, you took a few steps uh, away and then she told me that you must have noticed the way she was acting. You actually stepped back a few rows to the row that she was sitting in. And you reached into the row and grabbed her hand and said to her that I'm so happy you're here. Let me tell you, that story confirmed to me that you really, really, really did care about all types of Americans, all types of people. And I'll tell you why. You could have signed the autograph just to be politically correct, but for you to actually take some steps back and let her know from your soul to her soul that you were happy she was there, that spoke volumes. I tell you, that story, after hearing that, I was even more convinced of what I had al always believed. You know, that the sincerity was there and that you all truly did care about all people. Well, I look forward to these next four years. I'm here in my community working hard to create positive change, and I know that there's going to be some wonderful things that manifest. So I want to wish you, President Obama, you, First Lady Obama, and let's not forget Malia and Sasha, love, peace, and blessings from Rajendra Narang Singh, a transgender American.